With less than a month to go until the presidential election, one of the topics that, that's front and center is taxes. Both candidates have very different views. Cutting through the campaign rhetoric can sometimes be a challenge, but the nonpartisan tax foundation is just out with its latest analysis of the Clinton plan. Alan Cole is an economist on the federal tax policy team. Alan, thanks for taking the time today. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Now, your analysis finds that Secretary Clinton's plan would increase tax revenue by $1.4 trillion over the next decade, but at what cost? Well, um, that $1.4 trillion of revenue comes from a lot of tax rate increases, and especially rate increases at the margin. And what those do is, you know, for every additional dollar that you earn from some kind of productive economic activity, um, you lose a certain amount of it to taxes, and under the Hillary Clinton plan, a lot of those would go up. Um, and the cost of that is it reduces the incentive to do those productive activities in the first place. Now, it's not going to be a huge deal to growth. It's not going to fundamentally transform the economy or anything like that. But we do see it as a slight drag on GDP growth, uh, maybe a quarter of a percentage point per year. Um, for, for the duration of her presidency. Now, how does that compare to what Donald Trump has proposed? Well, with Donald Trump, we've got an entirely different story. A lot of those rates are coming down, and that, that could be great for the economy. But the thing is, we also have his plan reducing federal revenue by between four and a half and six trillion, depending on some provisions of the plan. And we don't really see how he's planning to make up that revenue loss in terms of spending or, or other proposals. Um, we think that growth can get you some of the way there, but not nearly all of it. And the question is, is what happens to that increasing deficit as time goes on? Now, as you look at Clinton's proposals, what's the biggest change that you've seen since you first analyzed her plan back in January? The biggest change just came this week. Um, she proposed an expansion of the child tax credit. Um, that's a refundable tax credit, which means that it can bring your tax liability below zero um, if you're at a low enough tax liability already for that to be the case. And a credit means that you simply get a dollar value amount that, that's um, subtracted from your tax bill or added to your refund. And um, she's expanded the, um, she's lowered the threshold at which that starts, and she's expanded it for some of um, the parents of younger children. And all told, that's about $200 billion worth of um, new tax credits for families over the next 10 years. Now, as you look at her plan for individuals, it also includes a progressive estate tax proposal. Right. Right, and that, that's also new. Um, and we have some questions about that, what, what purpose is it serving? Um, we found that the highest rate will probably affect all of about seven people, um, and possibly less, um, because there are a lot of means for estate tax planning, a lot of tax expenditures within the estate tax, um, and there are a lot of ways to design your as assets so that the IRS can't value them properly. So we don't even think that many people will ever end up paying um, that top rate that she was proposed. Now, on the business side, it appears many of Clinton's plans are very similar to those that have been introduced by President Obama. Um, yeah, although we have a couple of places where she's talked about um, business tax reform and, and that she would want it to raise some revenue, um, but hasn't really explained what that's going to be. Um, and she doesn't plan on it being too much, but um, that's still definitely something to watch out for. Where do you see the largest sources of revenue coming from? Under the Clinton plan, um, there's one of the biggest deals is um, a limitation on itemized deductions, um, such that itemized deductions can only really ever count against um, a 28% rate. The way that deductions work normally is you subtract things off of your taxable income, um, and then once you've done that, it um, reduces your taxable income so that you end up paying 
your tax rate on less income than you would otherwise. So if you imagine you're in the 39.6% bracket, then for every um, $100 that you can deduct, you get $39.60 off of your tax bill. Hillary Clinton would make it such that you can only get $28 off of your tax bill. Um, so there's kind of a, a ginger but nonetheless real attempt to limit itemized deductions. And that can raise quite a bit of revenue. Now, as you look across all of her proposals for both individuals and businesses, which of them would have the largest economic impact? Um, it, it's really a combination of, of all of her proposals. Um, there, there's a 5% um, surtax on high incomes, and that, that has a big uh, effect. Um, all told, all of the estate tax reforms put together have a reasonably big effect. Um, in, in that they discourage um, capital formation, they discourage the accumulation of saving that funds productive enterprises. Um, but all told, honestly, our economic effects aren't that large. Um, in a kind of baseline case where none of this agenda gets implemented, um, the CBO says we'll grow uh, maybe 19% in terms of real GDP over the next decade. And we have the, under the Clinton plan, that would maybe scale back to 16%. Uh, but it's cer certainly not a huge effect in, it, in any direction. Alan Cole, economist at the Tax Foundation, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.